So it has taken me the best part of 500 eggs, 500 attempts to try and get this perfect pal. And I finally achieved it, guys. In this video, I'm going to showcase to you how you get this incredible OP dark pal known as Frost Stallion Nut with the best passives, the secret skill everything you need to know how's it going people my name is dpj and before we go any further i'm giving away a couple of copies of this game or any game of your choice to be with a chance of winning simply drop a like on the video leave a comment down below make sure you are subbed and i will pick winners from the comment section and announce them sunday evening good luck everybody so i've already uploaded a video on the best shadow beak you can get possibly in the game uh, with this amazing dark wisp hidden skill in today's video guys, I'll show you how you can get this exact setup on Frost Stallion Nut. All the same passives, the same amazing skill and how you breed it to this point. So let's start. And firstly guys, you actually need to get that perfect build of the Shadow Beak. This is an absolute must. This means we need a Shadow Beak with Ferocious, Musclehead, Legend and Lord of the Underworld in regards to its passives. But we also need it to have that skill of Dark Wisp too. The process is long but it's definitely worth it just to even get Shadow Beak, never mind Frost Alien Nut. So I'll drop a bit of footage from a video I already made which gives you the best rundown of how you get this incredible Shadow Beak which actually starts with us having to catch the Tower Boss. So check out the footage from my other video on the screen now. But firstly we need to use that Tower Boss glitch to go and catch Victor and Shadow Beak. How this is done I will explain in a second. Now the reason we want to catch this tower boss is because this tower boss and its shadow beak has an exclusive skill on it that stupid OP called Dark Wisp. Now as far as I'm aware, this is the only place you can get this. There's nowhere else in the game this drops. It's only available on this boss. Firstly, you want to catch this tower boss. Now if you don't know how this is done, it's quite simple. You first need to attack a friendly NPC so you get that wanted status on your screen. This can be done anywhere where they are those friendly NPCs, but I recommend you head into the small settlement found right here on the map. Once you load in here guys, attack any of these NPCs and then simply just fast travel to that tower bus, seeing where I go right here on the map. Now once you enter this fight, you will notice that you are still wanted and the NPCs chasing your ass down will enter the fight with you. From here guys, you want to try and get the NPCs and tower bus to attack each other but you do not want to attack either of them. So do this by running between the two and hopefully they fire off a shot that hits one or the other. Once they do guys, nine times out of 10, the tower boss glitches out and runs into the corner. From here guys, you simply run up to it and throw a sphere at it. Doesn't matter what sphere it is, it will always come up with a 0% uh, capture rate, but you'll capture it either or, so it doesn't matter. So throw the sphere at Victor and Shadow Beats back. I think this may be needed. And then you have this in your collection. Again, they come with this Dark Wisp ability, which is incredible. Now that we do have it, guys, it's important to note, when it comes to Brooding Tower bosses, every combo you have seen on those online calculators is false besides one calculation. If you breed said Tower Boss with same said pal, they will result in being the same said pal. For instance, here, if we breed Victor and Shadow Beak with a normal Shadow Beak, you get Shadow Beak. Any other form of breeding will result in, I believe, a chickapoo. Which, by the way, I do recommend you doing after this setup is done because that Dark Wisp skill can pass down. So we can indeed use this on chickapoo at a later date and possibly add it onto other pals if needs be. But yeah, breeding Victor and Shadow Beak with another Shadow Beak will result in a Shadow Beak egg. But it doesn't end there, guys. The skill isn't a guarantee, so numerous breeding between the two will possibly be needed unless you are super lucky and get it first time. But wait, before you even do that guys, before you breed these two Shadow Beaks together, you wanna make sure you have the best Shadow Beak first with the ultimate passives to make sure that this skill when it lands is as deadly as possible. This means in my opinion, having a Shadow Beak with the passives of Musclehead, Ferocious, Legend and Lord of the Underworld. What these do are as follows, Musclehead will give you a 30% increase to that attack power. Yes, it takes away from work speed, but that isn't needed here. We then want Ferocious, this gives you a further 20% attack damage. We then want Legend, which gives you a further 20% increase to that attack. 
and a 20% increase to defense as well as a 15% increase to movement speed. And then lastly, Lord of the Underworld will give you a further 20% increase to that dark damage attack. So yes, these are the four passives you must have. But this is where it may get a little confusing. The Lord of the Underworld passive only comes from Necromus, the legendary world boss. There is no other way in getting this, but Necromus also comes with legend 2. That's two of the four passives we need straight away, which is definitely a bonus when it comes to passing these on via breeding, as you probably well know. So we will eventually need a Necromus within our arsenal to even get this set up. But firstly, we worry about the other two passives first, which actually can come on any pal. These are Ferocious and Musclehead. Now we need a mating pair of pals which have these passives on them. Now for me, the fastest route to the offspring we want would be one parent with one passive each. Problem is, passives seem really random and although they do and can pass down, getting what you want exactly is harder than you may think. Okay, so what we are looking for here, guys, is parents. And we need parents with one of these passives each. The best route in doing this that I could find is a Sparky and a Relaxaurus. So, yes, firstly, you want to go and grab that Sparky. Yes, the little electric fella is easy to find, easy to catch. Get as many as you can until you get one with either Ferocious or Musclehead on them. Or if you're lucky, you may land one with both passives on. But yeah, that's extremely lucky. Once you've achieved this guys, you want to go and get yourself a Relaxaurus. Again, you want to look for the opposite sex, obviously, and one which also has the passive on you need, in regards to Musclehead or Ferocious. Once achieved guys, breed these together until you get a Relaxaurus Lux with these two passives on it. Shouldn't take you long, but if you can, you want to try and land yourself a Relaxaurus Lux with these two passives on it and nothing else. It may be a long shot, but if you've got the spare cakes, you may as well try this. Now from here guys, you need to get yourself a Necromus if you don't have it already. Now this world boss is a part of the pair, but it's only him we need to catch at this moment. Again, he has the other two passives on him as standard Legend and Lord of the Underworld. Two very, very important passives to this setup. Okay, so once you have this Necromus guys, you now want to breed these two together. The Relaxaurus Lux and the Necromus. This guarantees you an Astagun baby. Now breed these until you get the Astagun with all four passives on it. No excuses here guys, you need all four passives on the Astagon, it's an absolute must. Now you have this guys, I mean you can always try and breed a second of the opposite sex, so we have a main pair with the same four passives, that's perfect. But yeah, once you have the Astagon with all four passives on, we now need to pass those passives on to a Shadow Beak. And the only way to do this guys is to breed Astagon with a Kitson. Now the Kitson, luckily enough, is an easy breed. The parents of Grisbolt and Lamble guarantee you a Kitson. Jolt Hog and Relaxaurus guarantee you a Kitson. Gobfin and Serpent guarantee you a Kitson. Rusher and Penking guarantee you a Kitson. Lifmonk and Beacon also guarantee you a Kitson. There are many, many combinations you can use here, but you need to get yourself a Kitson. <laughs> Now once achieved people, now you want to continuously breed that Kitson we just made with that Astigan until you get a Shadow Beak baby with all four passives. Eventually it will happen, but it's an absolute must. And don't worry about the other Shadow Beaks people that born and are useless because we'll use them for infusion material later on. But eventually guys, you will get that Shadow Beak with said four passives. This again is an absolute must for this setup. Now when you eventually do, you have the perfect Shadow Beak to now breed with Victor and Shadow Beak to now hopefully get that baby Shadow Beak with all four passives and the Dark Wisp skill. Keep in mind if the Dark Wisp skill isn't there when that baby Shadow Beak is born, I don't think you will ever learn it. So keep breeding away until you get this. It's definitely worth it people and eventually you will get that shadow beak with all four passives of lord of the underworld legend musclehead ferocious and the dark wisp skill okay so back to frostalian nut so now you should have that shadow beak with the perfect rolls or the passives and that skill but we now need to pass all these on to the house sephir which means breeding our perfect build shadow beak with one of the following pals hoping to pass on all the passives and this hidden skill of Shadow Wisp. So you can breed Shadow Beak with the following and you'll get a House Sephir. Warset, Elizabeth, 
Mama Rest or Mama Rest Christ, Reptiro, German Tired or German Tired Ignis. These guys you can burn with that shadow beak and it's a guaranteed house surfer baby. Now for me personally, when it comes to me creating my shadow beak, I made sure I bred both male and female, the perfect breeding pair having all passives and the skill, because I knew eventually something like this will come up. But yeah guys, take your pick of pals to breed with shadow beak. What I would say is you want to go for the one that has the least passives attached to it. Uh, I mean, like I said, it can be War Sector, Lizard Bee, Mama Rest, Mama Rest Christ, Reptile Roll, German Tide, German Tide, Ignis, any of these guys, um, you can breed with Shadow Beak and it guarantees you that house effort. But again, you want to look for the one, the one you've got, or go out and get one, catch one, which has the least passives on it. Therefore, when it comes to breeding it with Shadow Beak, it means more times than not, the baby's going to result in having more of shadow beaks passives which is what we want here we want to pass on shadow beak and all his passives and that skill onto that house of a baby so once you do have this house of a baby guys now guys you just brood this continuously with frost stallion yes the legendary world boss of frost stallion breeding these two together guarantees you that frost stallion not baby but obviously you want that frost stallion not baby to have all of house Sephir's passives and that dark wisp skill you don't want it passing on anything from frost stallion obviously apart from legend which is something we already have now on house Sephir. so yeah guys do this until you get the frost stallion nut i mean it will take you a while unless you're super super lucky i'm thinking probably 100 eggs plus but that's okay because you'll end up using these 100 extra and spare frost stallion nuts in the condensation machine to make your now final frost stallion nut the best version of it possible and don't forget also guys to use the statue of power as well to level up that frost alien nut even further people and don't forget guys for even further damage on your frost alien nut or any other dark pal use those who crates within your party the more the merrier uh, the more you have the more level these are the more damage output they will add on to the attack damage of your frost alien nut and shadow beak so keep that in mind too people but yes this is how you get the best version of shadow beak and frost alien nut in the entire game Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you're seeing, want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.